So welcome to Beauty of Colors podcast, Laureate. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. So Laureanne, tell us a little bit about you and what is your story? Oh, gosh. Um, my story, uh, I'll make it uh, just the recent story because otherwise we'll be here all day. Um, for the past few years, I have been uh, researching and uh, developing a coaching and course uh, program for women uh, struggling with hair loss. And uh, the reason that I chose to become a coach for hair loss is that I have suffered from hair loss for 40 years. Uh, it's actually a little more than 40 years. Uh, I have a, um, an autoimmune disease of the scalp. And even though the way you're looking, the way I look right now, looks like uh, I have normal hair. Uh, if I were to um, show you, uh, you would see that there's really very little there. And it's because I just got my hair done. Mm -hmm. So when I just get my hair done, the, the scalp is covered with color. And so it's very hard to see. In a couple of days, uh, it will look very sparse. So um, it's uh, it's sparse enough to be quite noticeable. Uh, and of course, I remember I was uh, 18 when my hair loss started. And I remember how traumatic it was, how uh, devastating it was. I swore I would never go out of the house again. Um, I thought I was ugly. I thought everybody would notice. Uh, I was ashamed. I was, uh, I felt terrible, basically. And I realized, um, having spoken with, in doing my research, having spoken with a lot of women who have hair loss uh, more recently, because of course, 40 years ago, I thought, well, maybe things are different now. Well, unfortunately, it's not different. People have the same reaction. They're devastated. They go into a kind of whirlwind of negative uh, emotions uh, about themselves mostly. So they lose their self-esteem, their self-confidence, their sense of identity, their sense of femininity. And uh, it affects every aspect of their lives. So uh, they become uh, anxious, depressed. They uh, isolate themselves. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bad situation. Um, and it's um, a lot of it can be explained by uh, the fact that women's hair loss is so stigmatized in uh, society, uh, especially American society, uh, or let's say, I would think most societies, uh, women are expected to have beautiful hair. Uh, and if they don't, uh, or especially if the hair is missing, then there are judgments made about them and they're usually negative judgments. Uh, whereas men, uh, it is um, much more acceptable to lose their hair. Uh, for women, it is still uh, not socially acceptable. Uh, so there are all these feelings of shame and embarrassment and uh, loss of dignity, uh, it's uh, it becomes very difficult emotionally. It affects their work, affects their family life. So I decided um, to address all of this in a coaching program. Uh, and of course, uh, I felt that I would uh, be able to help them because I have 40 years of experience where I have felt all the feelings, <laughs> all of those feelings. Um, and also because I'm a medical researcher. So I've been researching uh, hair loss among women for many years. Um, I was doing medical research. Before that, I published a, uh, uh, a textbook that was used in schools all over the world, but on a different medical topic. But um, 
so I felt that they needed help with dealing with the emotions, getting off of this sort of roller coaster of emotion um, so that they could um, start feeling better, start feeling better about themselves and then start moving forward, get um, change their mindset, start doing some self-care that was much, much needed uh, to help them to become more grounded, uh, get some perspective on their situation, and then to understand how do we treat women's hair loss. It's not the same as how we treat men's hair loss. Um, there are some similarities, but uh, women lose their hair in uh, many times in different ways, and uh, there are different medications for it. So there's all the practical aspects. How do you find a doctor? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you speak to the doctor? What questions do you ask? What, uh, what uh, tests can you expect that the doctor will do? And then, of course, there's all of the um, uh, trying to um, make yourself uh, feel as beautiful as, uh, as you want to. Some people manage to feel beautiful with their hair, like I'm wearing it, uh, you know, it's thin. It's, it's, if you looked at the top of my head, it's obvious. But, you know, I've had 40 years to get used to it, and it's okay. But some women uh, really benefit from wearing additional hair, from uh, wearing uh, what we call toppers, mm -hmm. which is like a wig piece that just covers the top, uh, or wearing wigs. And so we have a wig expert who does a seminar uh, for us, and... Um, she um, answers questions and explains that uh, the wig that your maybe your mother, your grandmother wore that looked really like a wig, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and that makes a lot of people, uh, makes a big difference for them. Um, and, uh, and then we talk about the future because women with hair loss stop thinking about the future. They feel they, they no longer have a future. Mm -hmm. They are afraid to project forward because they're afraid, what if I go bald? What if my hair loss gets worse? Uh, so they just stop thinking about the future. And it's a shame to, that's one of the things that keeps us going in life is mm -hmm. that we dream about uh, the kind of life we want. And, uh, um, and so I, I get them uh, making plans for the future and writing it down. Uh, where do they want to be in six months? Where do they want to be in 12 months? Do they have a particular goal in mind? So um, so that's what I'm trying to do. And the, the program is called Hair Loss Heroines. And uh, it's the first time I've been a, a coach in my life. I've done many other things, but uh, it's very rewarding work. Okay, sounds good. I'm Lorianne. So Lorianne, how would women with hair loss transform their lives? Do you have like different steps that you take them through or is it just one step that for all women that applies to all women with hair loss? All women with hair loss are pretty much feeling the same things. Some of them may feel uh, additional things if it's caused by a disease, because then they're dealing with the disease as well as, for instance, lupus. Mm -hmm. Lupus causes hair loss, but it causes lots of other symptoms. So they're dealing with those symptoms as well. But I'm not qualified. I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. So I'm not qualified to deal with that. So I stick to the things that I am qualified as coach to uh, be able to help them with. Um, so basically, it's just the fact that they are losing their hair or they have lost their hair. Mm -hmm. And it's it's basically a three-step process over three months. The first step is uh, what I call developing an emotional toolbox. It's looking at all of the different reasons that women feel so bad 
about losing their hair. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's, it's something that just happens. They, it's not their fault. Uh, there's, uh, it just happens spontaneously, but often they feel almost as if it's their fault. They feel guilty. They feel, uh, uh, no longer accepted by anyone, even their own family. So we look at all of the different things that come up for them. For example, um, since society does not accept women with uh, being bald or having very thin hair where it's noticeable uh, or patches of thin hair. Sometimes it presents in different ways. So um, uh, because society has such unreasonable expectations of women, you know, from the time we're very small, we, uh, we see uh, women with beautiful, long flowing hair, and we're told that that's the ideal. That's the way a woman should look. Um, you know, perfect, uh, not a hair out of place, uh, and certainly lots of lots of hair. So it's helpful for them to realize that they're kind of victims of unreasonable expectations of society that doesn't allow for individual um, differences. Uh, it, we and we tend to shun people who are different. So it helps them to get a little perspective that um, it, it, it's not that they really are ugly. It's that society is telling them that they're ugly. They're still the same person. Uh, we talk about, um, uh, well, I give them a, um, a self-care ritual which includes uh, mindfulness to kind of meditation. And they're supposed to do this every morning. So mindfulness, gratitude, and affirmations. So they should take uh, at least a half an hour to an hour in the morning and uh, spend as much time as they can uh, meditating up to about 20 minutes. Then, um, writing down what they're grateful for and finding a couple of affirmations, things that they can say to themselves. And the main thing that I tell them uh, as an affirmation is you are enough and you are not your hair. Mm -hmm. um, you are so much more than your hair. Your hair is a small part of you doesn't have the kind of importance that you are feeling like it does. Uh, and the more that they get into taking care of themselves, bringing down the level of stress that they're under because they're under a tremendous level of stress and stress actually contributes to hair loss. So, uh, so the first part is all the emotions, because until they stop having all of these emotions running around in their head, they it's very hard to move forward. So um, when we get to the point where they're, they're starting to um, um, get some perspective and get off of that, uh, that roller coaster, then we start talking about, uh, well, what can you do about this? And there are things that they can do about it. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a cure, women's hair loss or for men's hair loss for that matter. Um, but there are treatments that can help you uh, stop the hair loss um, and possibly regrow hair. Uh, there's a brand new treatment for a kind of hair loss called alopecia areata, uh, where people become bald, uh, women, and uh, this new treatment, they can grow all their hair back because the hair is not, the follicles are not dead, they're just um, not producing hair. 
So um, that's a very recent uh, breakthrough in medication. So we want them to we want them to see a doctor also because hair loss is a it's often thought of as a cosmetic problem, uh, but it really is a medical problem because hair loss is uh, caused by things that are going on in your body, mm -hmm. and sometimes it can be a sign that something is wrong. It can be uh, that your uh, thyroid function is uh, is not uh, the way it should be. It can be a sign in younger women of polycystic um, uh, ovarian disease. Uh, it can be a sign of um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So uh, you need blood tests to make sure that uh, there isn't something else going on in your body that is causing the hair loss. Because if there is, it can sometimes be something serious. And uh, then the answer to your hair loss is to treat the underlying problem. Um, so uh, it is uh, a medical symptom and so uh, there should be, uh, you should see a doctor about it just to rule out uh, a bunch of things. Once you rule all of that out, well, then it's a kind of just alopecia, which just means hair loss. Um, so we talk about uh, the common kinds of hair loss, the few medications we have that do work. I talk a lot about the kinds of products that they find online, none of which work. Mm -hmm. um, the things you see on TV, the pills that they say, oh, you take this and your hair will grow back. This is all, uh, this is a totally unregulated industry. And a lot of people are making a lot of money uh, off of women who are, and men who are desperate to get their hair back. So, um, and then the, the third part is we talk about the, the practical things, uh, how to, uh, how to care for your hair. So you're not doing things that are breaking your hair or frying it or, you know, very harsh treatments, or you're not, you know, pulling it back very tight, which can cause, uh, hair loss and breakage as well. Uh, what kinds of products to use, and then the alternative hair, if uh, you feel that you're ready for that. And uh, sometimes that can make a, a big difference because people look at themselves in the mirror and they say, oh, now I recognize myself again because mm -hmm. uh, I have hair. And so uh, th that's basically the, uh, the program. So, so Laurieann, where can the listeners get in touch with you and where can they get a copy of your book? Is your book about hair loss or is it something different? No, I'm sorry. I, I probably confused you. Um, I wrote a, a medical textbook uh, about 20 years ago that was on a totally different medical subject. Um, I don't have a book on this, but I do have a website mm -hmm. and I do have a free training uh, at the moment that uh, that can help them. And that can also tell them how to get in touch with me so that we can talk about uh, their situation. So the website is simply Hair Loss Heroines, which is the name of the, the program, Hair Loss Heroines, all run together, dot com. And if you put a slash and then free dash training, um, after hairlossheroines.com slash free dash training, then you will go to a page where you can get this free training. And uh, then it talks more in depth about the kinds of things that I'm talking about and how we deal with them in our program. They can also contact me at hello at hairlossheroines.com. And I'm on, uh, I have a Facebook group 
so they can look up the hair loss heroines facebook group uh in the facebook uh, search um i'm on instagram uh i'm not linkedin uh so there are a number of ways that they can can contact me and um i I encourage them to, because even, you know, it's a group program, even just being with other women on the coaching calls, um, other women who have hair loss, some people have been totally alone with their hair loss. And they, um, they, when they're able to talk to other women who have hair loss, it can be very, very helpful for them. They feel less alone. And of course, I also have hair loss and I'm on, I'm the coach on the call as well. So um, uh, if I can be of help, um, I, uh, I certainly would be uh, happy to, to help anyone. Um, and I certainly get it. I, I know what it feels like. So uh, all my empathy and, and love goes out to those women who have hair loss. And by the way, 50% of all women will experience hair loss during their lives. So it's a very, very common thing. So Lorianne, if you have any last words for the listeners, what would you say to someone who's going through the hair loss process right now? And want to build, they kind of want to build a confidence that they don't have. And this is preventing them from having this confidence. What would you say to that person listening today? Uh, first, two things. First of all, I would say to them, don't wait to get help. Um, a lot of people, uh, because of the shame involved, will wait a year, two years, many years before they will ask for help. In the meantime, they're suffering and their hair loss is probably getting worse and it's easier to treat when it first starts. And the second thing I would say to them is what I said earlier, you are a whole person. You are not your hair. Uh, you are so much more than your hair. Your hair is a very small part of who you are. So um, try to think of all the other things that make you a wonderful person, a, an attractive person, a beautiful person, even, you know, physically. Uh, it's not just your hair that makes you beautiful. It's everything, especially, uh, I always say that, um, your who you are really shines through when you smile it's it's what people it's the feeling people get from you when you smile at them and they can see inside you that's what makes you beautiful it's it's not beautiful hair that makes you beautiful wow well said Lorianne. <laughs> well Lorian, thank you for being on beauty of colors podcast well it's my pleasure thank you